Welcome to Arena. I'm Will Wheaton. And I'm Travis Outs. This week on Arena, we begin our first ever Arena tournament, which will pit teams of players from across the internet against each other in a variety of combat environments, including Counter-Strike, Unreal Tournament, and MechWarrior 4. A scoring system breaks down like this. Each show is made up of three games. Teams compete in three separate rounds to win a game and a point. Now, winning games is important, but it's not final. We also give a point to the team with the most valuable player and a point to the team with the highest number of kills. That adds up to five points. The team with the most points wins. Now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Here's the other half. We'll begin tonight in Counter-Strike. The most played 3D action shooter on the internet is a modification or mod to the hugely successful game Half-Life. Unlike traditional death matches, if players want to succeed in Counter-Strike, they'd better work together to capture the objectives, or they'll be working together to clean their teammates off the wall. Now get comfortable, because we're taking you to the jungles of central Mexico and an arena called Aztec. Team Anvil must plant and detonate a bomb at one of two places. From their spawn site, they can head through these oak doors, across this large plaza area, to bomb site A or they can cut right across this bridge to bomb site B. For Team Steel to win, they have to stop Team Anvil from planting the bomb or defuse it once it's planted. From their spawn site, Team Steel can take a short walk into the plaza and bomb site A, or they can go up these stairs past bomb site B and cut Team Anvil off at the bridge. There is one other way to win. You can eliminate all the opposing players, which is much easier said than done. Let's meet today's teams. Uh, from Los Angeles, California. My favorite game is Counter-Strike. My name is Josh Engel. I am from Southern California, born and raised. My favorite game is probably Counter-Strike. My name is Trish Norton. My favorite game, well, I really like playing Dead or Alive 3. I've been playing video games since the days of Pitfall. My name is Bobby Burns. I'm from uh, the beautiful Ventura County. I've been playing video games ever since I had fingers. My name is Robert Sosha. I was born in Houston, Texas. My name's Daniel Tapper. My favorite game is Medal of Honor. My name is Jerry Provencio. I live here in Los Angeles, Silver Lake area. My name is Michael Martinson. Actually, I live in West Hollywood, so I'm 38. I'm probably entirely too old to be playing this game, but... <laughs> well, my favorite game would be a Medal of Honor, um, although Counter-Strike is an old favorite. Well, they seem like a nice bunch of kids. Yeah, if by nice you mean surly. Oh, much better call. Let's see how this surly bunch handles themselves in Counter-Strike. We begin round one at Team Steel's spawn site. They're on the move. I love their sporty outfits. Here's Team Anvil. As you can see from the backpack he's wearing, SOB has the bomb. The team's decided to stick together as they hop through the oak doors and into the plaza, okay? He has a slinky in his pants. Very nice. Team Steel's headed to the plaza as well. Oh, this is gonna get ugly as 808 Strafe avoids Team Anvil's grenade. Uh, he's gonna get pissed in a moment here. He sure is. Oh, oh. he takes out Brittany, but brittany has got the last laugh as Strafe goes down. <laughs> last laugh, they're both dead. I don't think they're laughing at this point. Well, they're, they're laughing in spirit. SOB has taken advantage of the distraction and planted the bomb. Okay, now the bomb has been planted. Team Steel's gotta defuse it or Team Anvil's gonna take the round. And Team Anvil isn't gonna sit back and let Steel have this one. Hecubus has snuck down into the river and he's on his way up the ramp towards the bomb site. He spotted Gringo when they're Exchanging fire. Oh, Gringo goes down. Okay, now he better defuse that bomb or else we're going to have... Uh... A big mess. Yep, body parts everywhere. Okay, the bomb's behind, behind you, you. Hecubus. There you... Oh, oh, hey, look, okay. there's the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Although Team Steel had more kills, Team Anvil successfully detonated the bomb, and they take round one. How about the end of that round, huh? That was pretty cool. Yeah. Hecubus split off from the rest of his team, which kept him out of the hot firefight. You know, if you'd gotten to the bomb site just a few seconds earlier, mm -hmm. or uh, paid any attention to the bomb at all, <laughs> we might have seen a very different result. The players have regrouped, and they're respawning now. Let's go to round two. 
Team Anvil is down by one as we begin round two. They're heading down the stairs and towards the bridge. Do you think Team Steel will change strategies this round? I think they're going to try not to get blown up to get a bomb at the end. I think that's a good strategy. We'll see if it pays off oh, for them. You. Anvil's on the move, and Larry Legend with the backpack is the bomb carrier for his team. Team Steel is going towards the bridge. They may be able to cut off Team Anvil, and D-Money is splitting off from his team towards the plaza. Brittany's taking point for Larry Legend. And meanwhile, back in the plaza, SOB has found Shamu and Hecubus, and he takes them both out. Nice. Ouch. Oh, Brittany goes down once again. Brittany is what the kids call hating right now, folks. As is Larry Legend. Okay, the bomb has been dropped, and Team Anvil is going to have to come back and pick it up. Back in the plaza, D-Money is one of two surviving members of Team Steel, and SOB is the last remaining member of Team Anvil. Now, if SOB wants his team to win, he needs to go pick up that bomb and plant it, or take down both D-Money and 808 Strife. Good luck. What we have here is a good old-fashioned game of cat and mouse, but with uh, guns and without cats or mice. Good analogy, Travis. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Okay, with that kill, 808 Strafe is the last remaining member for Team Steel, and SOB is the last remaining member for Team Anvil. Now it's a game of cat and mouse. With but with guns. Guns, yeah. And, and without cat and mice. But, but it's two people now. Oh, right. Okay, SOB has found the bomb for his team. Now all he has to do is take it to an area and plant it. All right, we've got 808 Strafe, I believe. SOB is into the plaza area. Okay. He's crossing yeah. behind 808 Strafe. Does 808 Strafe just not see him? I, I don't know whether he's hiding or he just didn't see him. <laughs> okay, it looks like he just didn't see him, as SOB is afforded great cover by those big cement blocks, and he's planting the bomb now. Okay, the uh, bomb okay, is been planted. He now, has to know now he's, he's got to see it. Now, okay. well... Yes. Yeah, okay, they've clearly found each other as they exchange right. gunfire. Good use of a pillar. 808 Strafe is making great defensive moves there as he takes down SOB. That's actually an offensive move because he killed him. Oh, that's true. Okay. <laughs> but the round's not over because 808 Strafe has to defuse that bomb in order to win for his team. Quick, any bets? Any bets? Yeah, I bet he's going to defuse it. Really? Yeah. The bomb has been defused. Uh. Well, Team Steel was unable to defuse the bomb in round one with rather messy results, but they more than made up for it in round two. And how about that cat and mouse at the end, huh, Travis? Yeah, yeah SOB must have had some previous deathmatch experience because once he realized that he was the last man left on his team, he went to old school quake mode. Yeah, and how about 808 Strafe, huh? This guy is all over the place. He only had one kill in round one, but he had four kills plus a bomb defusal in round two. I cannot wait to see what this guy does in round three. As we begin round three, Larry Legend is again the bomb carrier for Team Anvil. Team Steel is heading out towards the bridge a second time. And Team Anvil gets to the doors, and it looks like they're going to head into the plaza this time. Yeah, with the round on the line, Hecubus isn't taking any chances here. He creeps around the corner. Larry Legend is attempting to distract Team Steel with a grenade. Oh, Hecubus and Team Money get mowed down by SOB. Ouch. Uh, that's Gringo and Larry Legend coming up behind him. And here's Shamu for Team Steel. Oh, Shamu takes one in the back from Gringo, and Team Anvil takes a second to regroup. This is 808 Strafe. He's the last surviving member of Team Steel, and he's really got his work cut out for him. And now, soggy boots. <laughs> if this were any other player, I'd be calling around for Team Anvil. Oh, really? Well, way to be impartial there, Will. Thank you very much. I'm on my way to being a Nevada boxing commissioner. <laughs> well, Larry Legend and Brittany are the only players left for Team Steel, and they've planted the bomb at bomb site B. All right, now right now, 808 Strafe can't be too careful. If he goes down, he takes the entire team with him. Yep, Brittany has found 808 Strafe, and the clock's really ticking for him. Hey, where the hell is Brittany going? Uh, yeah, I guess he's preparing to dump Gatorade on Larry Legend. Oh, <laughs> oh well, well, he's going to be dumping it on a big mess on the wall. <laughs> oh, okay. that'll be difficult. Oh, if 808 Strafe that? can defuse that bomb, he's going to win the round for Team Steel. All right, he's behind a big block. Oh, and there's a grenade. Oh. <laughs> All right, Team Anvil wins. Team Anvil wins. Uh, I really thought that Team Steel was going to pull it off right until <clears throat> the end. You mean right up until 808 Strafe died? Yes, right up until the exact moment when 808 Strafe died. I thought that they had victory within their grasp. Let's take a look at the scoreboard. Uh, looking at the scoreboard, we see that Team Anvil has taken this game two rounds to one. Anvil gets out to the early lead. Let's see if they can add to it when Arena returns. When I'm finished, if none of us make it, at least there'll be some kind of a record. The storm's been hitting us pretty hard now. We still have nothing to go on.
One other thing. I think it rips through your clothes when it takes you over. We're all very tired. There's nothing else I can do. Just wait. R.J. McCready, helicopter pilot, U.S. Outpost North 31. Blake, you should have a look at this. What the hell? What have you got? One body. No survivors. Dealing with isn't human, but it's taken human form. Stay the hell away from me, I'm warning you. This is crazy. You're infected just like the rest. I've seen firsthand what this infection is capable of. Oh, you have no idea what it can do. If you want a job done right, you gotta do it yourself. You're out of your league here, Blake. Rated M for mature. Game over, Whitley. This game is just beginning. Welcome back to Arena. Anvil won our first game, and we're about to begin game two, an Unreal Tournament. Introduced in 1999, Unreal Tournament won Game of the Year honors in 2000 by breaking out of the traditional deathmatch paradigm with modes like Assault, Domination, and Capture the Flag. The world of Unreal Tournament, set in 2341, is bleak at best. Players use weapons ranging from a handgun called the Enforcer to a shoulder-launched nuclear weapon known as the Redeemer to secure victory in a variety of environments, like abandoned power plants and mining facilities. Tonight's match is a capture the flag contest, and it takes place on a small asteroid orbiting a planet much like our own. Let's take a look at tonight's Unreal Tournament arena. Facing Worlds gives both teams identical bases separated by a large neutral zone. Both teams have a variety of weapons available to them, including rocket launchers, shock rifles, sniper rifles, and redeemers. After spawning, players will have to avoid enemy snipers as they cross the neutral zone, which doesn't afford them any cover, on their way into their opponent's base. Once inside, players can score by picking up their opponent's flag and returning it to their own base. This is one of my favorite arenas, Travis. Well then, stop talking about it and let's start round one. Good idea. Let's go. Larry Legend is on his way into the Team Steel base. He's dodging disc fire everywhere. He picks up an extra enforcer. He's around the corner, and he's got the flag. All right, now just run. Run, Forrest, run. Well, he's on his way back to his own base. Oh, oh. heck, he mistakes him out. But here's his teammate, SOB. SOB grabs the flag, and he starts back towards his own end. Those puffs of dust mean that the sniper fire is everywhere. Oh, sniper fire finds its mark and sends him down. Uh, here's his teammate, Brittany. Uh, well, we can't accuse anyone on Team Anvil of being a flag hog. Well, we oh. can't accuse them of capturing either as Brittany oh. steps off the map. That's gotta hurt. Uh, meanwhile, Larry Legend has respawned and he's back at the Team Steel base. He's picked up an extra enforcer and he's got the flag. He's on his way out and 808 Strafe takes him down with a headshot. Oh, he's sleeping. Not content to sit on defense, 808 Strafe has worked his way into the Team Anvil base and he's picked up the Team Anvil flag. And meanwhile, back at the Team Steel base, SOB has picked up the Team Steel flag. I like his little tail. <laughs> he fights off a defender. There he goes. Oh, oh, gets taken out by a sniper. Uh, both teams are using sniper fire really well. They really are. Uh, meanwhile, 808 Strafe still has the Team Anvil flag, and he's heading up through the neutral zone, <laughs> and Gringo takes him out. All right, here's his teammate Shamu, and Shamu has the flag. Go, Shamu. Free Shamu. Hey, he's doing the moonwalk into his own base. That's got to make his opponents feel bad. I think he's going backward just to taunt them. I'm pretty sure that he is. His time runs out, and Team Steel takes the round. One to nothing. 
<laughs> team Steel gets out to an early lead, but something tells me the Team Anvil isn't going to just roll over. Yeah, Team Steel was able to get that last capture just before time expired, but Team Anvil showed remarkable team spirit. They sure did. Let's see if that teamwork pays off in round two. Hecubus is in the neutral zone for Team Steel, on his way towards the Team Anvil base. You just saw him pick up the big Kega health there, which will bump his health up to 200. That should give him some breathing room as he assaults Team Anvil. He's entered the Team Anvil foyer. Brittany's there with a rocket launch. He's like a tank. Oh, but Hecubus takes him out. He picks up some more health, and he's got the flag. Health hog. Don't you just love the way those little Nelly workouts move? Yeah, it's sort of like a waddle. It's so cute. Really? Look at him go, wagging his little tail as he's on his way back. And oh, oh they're even cuter when they die. <laughs> Spun around like six times there. Uh, meanwhile, back in the Team Steel Tower, SOB has picked up the Team Steel flag, and he heads into the neutral zone. Oh, D-Money is there and takes him out. Ouch. D-Money's really helping out the team right now by not only smacking down the flag carry, but returning the flag as well. All right, here's Brittany heading towards the Team Steel base. He's in the foyer, and he's got the flag, and he heads back towards his own zone. Go, 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 go. Oh, oh. 808 Strafe blasts him right off the map. If this keeps up, Brittany's going to want to invest in a space helmet. <laughs> as Brittany falls off the map, the Team Steel flag is returned. All right, All right, back in the Team Steel zone, SOB has shaken off a few shots from Hecubus as he picks up a shock rifle and the flag. Interesting. Experienced Unreal Tournament players know that the shock rifle is to be one of the most deadly weapons if you use it uh, properly, but that's mostly in small areas. With this large area, I'm not sure that you can use it right. Well, it doesn't look like he's going to need to use it as he crosses the neutral zone and is relatively safe in his own end. Pretty much uh, there's no one there. Everyone left early, I guess. <laughs> they, they're taking lunch. All right. All right, well, he walks the flag into his own base, and SOB captures the flag for Team Anvil as time runs out. With that capture, Team Anvil has evened up the score. Brittany must be feeling just a little bit frustrated. Yeah, it's one thing uh, to get smacked down, but getting blasted right off the map twice. Yeah. That's got to bruise the pride just a little bit. <laughs> well, we are tied at one to win each as we head into round three. As we begin round three, 808 Strafe has picked up the Team Anvil flag for Team Steel, and here's SOB and, and the Team Steel base, and he's got the flag. He's on his way out. Here's 808 Strafe leaving the Team Anvil base. Dodge, die, dodge. Oh! oh die, die, die. Oh Shamu is there, and Shamu goes down. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Killing fields. Ah, Larry Legend is running up, and he returns the flag for Team Anvil. Back in front of the Team Steel base, SOB Hecubus and Shamu were involved in a serious firefight. He's only got an enforcer, too, so good luck, buddy. Oh, oh you kidding hey, me? I can't believe it. He takes him down with just the enforcer. He picks up. Get some health, and he's got the flag. You know, when you're good, all you need is an enforcer. You know Apparently so. Oh and, and, oh, and, well, you need to not get killed by the Nolly War Cow. Well, you know, hey, it's a Nolly War Cow. What can I say? All right, Larry Legend had the flag, but gets taken out by Hecubus. By the Nolly War Cow. Once Nolly again. War Cow. Nolly War Cow. <laughs> all right. Here's 808 Strafe over the hill with the Team Anvil flag. Covered oh. by Travis. Where's the Nolly workout? Yeah, while he's, cov he's covering his teammate. Oh. All right, 808 Strafe walks it in. He shoots. He scores. I'm so depressed. <laughs> With their second capture, Team Steel takes round three and this game. That was a great fight. Both teams played very well, with neither one really dominating. When we return, we'll see if these two teams who have kicked much ass in Counter-Strike and Unreal Tournament are able to kick huge metal ass in MechWarrior 4. <laughs> Arena. In our first two rounds, players ran on foot as they duked it out in Counter-Strike and Unreal Tournament. But in round three, we'll be putting players into the cockpits of the newest and toughest battle mechs in MechWarrior 4. In 1989, some intrepid programmers at Activision took Battletech out of breakfast nooks and onto the internet. They called their game Mech Warrior, and it rapidly became one of the most popular multiplayer games ever, winning countless awards. Earlier this year, Microsoft released Mech Warrior 4, Black Knight, and with improved graphics, weapons, and maps, it's sure to take its place next to the original in the hallowed pantheon of modern classics. The hallowed pantheon of modern classics. Oh, what are we on yeah. PBS now? Yes, we are. This week on Great Performances, PBS presents Black Warrior. Black Warrior Black, Four? Yeah. Black Warrior Four. Black Knight. Yeah, well, you're I destined for up. PBS. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Let's start round one. <laughs> <laughs> Sob for Team Anvil is on the hillside, and he's found 808 Strafe. 
They're firing their heavy lasers at each other. Oh, 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 oh that Gauss rifle barely missed SOB. Now, both mechs are using lasers which generate heat. They'll have to watch their heat levels as well as their enemies. Now, uh, both lasers are targeting really well. Uh-oh. Okay, that green cloud means that SOB is close to overheating and he's flushing coolant to stay alive. Looks like a bad burrito. Well, it looks like they've both taken some heavy damage and they're gonna regroup. No! No! No, SOB gets one last shot off and 808 strafe goes Whoa. down. Whoa! there goes SOB! It looks like he had an internal ammo explosion. I had one of those once, you know. Ah, uh, I remember it was during our road trip to Vegas. <laughs> All right. All right, back over in the courtyard, Gringo is being attacked by D-Money. They're dancing around each other. They sure are. Doing the Watusi there, I think. That's the mech Tusi, I believe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh. D-Money gets some off-screen help from one of his teammates. Not a moment too soon, either. Gringo's really making his shots count. He sure is. D-Money's got quite a limp oh. now, but it doesn't seem to matter as he takes Gringo down. You know, D-Money's linked all of his energy weapons together, using them with devastating results uh, for Gringo. <laughs> Over near the reservoir, Gringo has respawned, and he spotted the respawn Hecubus. Oh, he fires some missiles, but they haven't had a chance to lock on, so they go wide of their mark. Gringo has twisted his torso around, and he's backing oh. away. Oh, right into D-Money. Mech butt shot. Oh, Gringo is taking some heavy, brutal laser fire as D-Money takes him down. Ow. That's the end of round one, and Team Steel wins it four to one. Oh, poor Gringo. He just backed right into D-Money. I don't know. D-Money's kind of hot, but I do feel bad for Gringo. Really? No. I didn't think so. Yeah. <laughs> Let's watch round two. We begin round two in the meadow, where SOB is squared off against Shamu. Wow, he lets loose a massive blast of linked energy weapons. That's really deadly if those lasers find their target. Which they did not. No, they certainly didn't. Shamu battles back with his lasers and his Gauss rifle. And it looks like that Gauss rifle ends up being too much for SOB. He's going to break off this fight and head towards the reservoir where he's found Hecubus. Hecubus is using his chain gun and some light lasers against SOB, but I don't know if that's going to be enough firepower against SOB's heavy mech. SOB fires oh. another massive blast at Hecubus. He's going to get into heat trouble, Travis. You think so? Well, I'm pretty there sure. You go. Yep, there he goes. He's powered down. Oh, man. He's a sitting duck right now. Oh. Okay, he powers back up, and Hecubus could be in trouble again as he releases another massive blast of weapons. You know, Hecubus actually may have the advantage here since SOB's already in heat trouble, and he's relying mostly on heavy energy weapons. He sure is. Oh, oh he oh. fires another massive blast of weapons, but I'm afraid that's going to cost him. Yeah, there he yep, goes. there he goes. He's powered down again. You know, he should really unlink some of those weapons before oh. this gets old. Oh, Hecubus <laughs> fails to take advantage of SOB's weakened state, and, and SOB blasts him again with linked energy weapons. And... And powers down there a you third go. time. This is a really odd strategy, Travis. Well, you know, he doesn't have much choice. He's either powered down or suffer another internal ammo explosion. And we know how painful those can be. Sure. All right, we move to the courtyard where D-Money is surrounded by three enemy mechs. Gringo has arrived to join the fray, making it four on one. This is just painful. Oh, oh. not surprisingly, D-Money is reduced to rubble, just as Shamu has arrived to take his place. Well, that's nice of him. Just in time, probably. There you go, to get iced. Well, that's the end of round two. <laughs> and it, not surprisingly, goes to Team Anvil. That was a tough round for D-Money. Yeah, the only thing worse than being surrounded by three enemy mechs is being surrounded by four enemy mechs. Or four Trekkies. Oh, it's funny because it's true. Let's watch round three. Round three begins just outside of the courtyard. Larry Legend has the high ground advantage as he takes on Hecubus. They're trading pulse laser and medium laser fire. And uh, Hecubus, although he's a smaller, weaker mech, is, is trying to ram the heavier mech. What's going on there? Maybe he's just lonely. Well, I, I guess. OK, he's, he's traded positions with his opponent now. And ah, here comes 808 Strafe on his own team to help him out. It's a sandwich of death. <laughs> 808 Strafe and Hecubus have successfully flanked Larry Legend. And Hecubus is moving off into the courtyard. It's like a laser light show up there. Oh, you know, it looks exactly like a laser light show. Except without the sting music, and it's more deadly. <laughs> Hecubus is taking on Brittany. Oh. oh, big hit from Brittany and a big hit from Larry Legend, who's limping up around the corner. Oh, oh. Larry Legend takes a fatal hit from 808 Strafe. Oh, good try, though. Well, 808 Strafe is up in the courtyard, and he's turned his attention to SOB. Both mechs are getting really great coverage from their teammates. They sure are. 808 Strafe has decided to ram his opponent as well. Well, he's taking a page from Hecubus. Uh, Team Steel is getting off some really impressive long-range missile fire here, and I'm afraid SOB is uh, on his way out. Oh, he's getting it from all sides. He's Missiles, getting... lasers. I think I just saw somebody throw a tree at him. 
Oh man. Okay, 808 Strafe is taking some very oh, heavy damage. Oh, did you damage. see that? Oh, he fell did he down? fall down? He fell down and hit him with two missiles. Well, 808 Strafe has taken some very heavy damage to his left arm. I don't think that. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, 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 oh double kill. Down. This 808 Strafe and SOB go down. That means time runs out and this round goes to Team Steel. Okay, what's with the smaller mech trying to repeatedly ram the larger mech? You know, I used to have a dog that did that. We got rid of it. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Team Steel wins the game. So let's take a look at our scoreboard and see who this week's overall winner is. Team Anvil won the Counter-Strike game. Team Steel won the Unreal Tournament game. Team Steel also won the Mech Warrior 4 game. So Team Steel will take two game points, while Anvil will get one game point. Now, Team Steel wins the total accumulated kills point with 33. To award our final point, we're going to take a look at our MVP challenge. The MVP is the player who, across all of our games, has the best kill-to-death ratio and captured the most objectives for his team. The Knights' MVP is, mental drum roll, 808 Strafe. Hi, my name is Josh Engel, and I'm this week's most valuable player. And the reason I'm the MVP is because I like to win. And the key to winning is teamwork, because without a good team, you're not going to be able to do well in these games. Uh, there's no I in team, so that's the bottom line. It is so true that there's no I in team. Uh, that means that Team Steel gets the MVP point, and they will take this week's match 4-1. to one. Hey, if you think you've got what it takes to compete in the arena, log into our website at g4tv.com slash arena. And remember, kids, these are 3D models in a computer game. None of this is real. For Travis Oates, I'm Will Wheaton. We'll see you next time in the arena.